Hey guys, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Claire. This cat is driving me freaking crazy. Ignore me the rest of the day, but then senses when I'm gonna film and suddenly is like the neediest kitty cat in the entire universe. You are so crazy. How's everyone doing? Let me know down below. I'm going back through some topic ideas that some of you, mainly one of you, have left on previous videos and just giving my general opinions on things. There's some good points of discussion. So for one, this is an interesting one. This is potentially like too much for a casual video. This might be its own video. As a writer and an artist. Being an artist is my day job. I mostly draw characters, but I also paint. I'm not super big on the online world and the art space. There are other professional artists or animators who really use Instagram as like their portfolio. Apparently there's a big pull away from that as of recently because there's a lot of like animators and illustrators that are deeply concerned about Instagram scrubbing their work and using it for AI generated images. It's genuinely something I'm not worried about. <laughs> I know some people that are, that are extremely anxious about it. And I'm not saying that there aren't industries that shouldn't be anxious about it. I think honestly, graphic designers might have the hardest time. Uh, people that come up with logos it seems to me that one competent graphic designer using an AI can do what used to take like a team of five or 10 people to do. That's kind of the vibe I get from that, but I'm not in that particular industry, so maybe I'm completely off base. As a visual artist, I mean, I think AI using other people's work and images to create original works, I mean, there's dealing, they're scraping, in a lot of ways is dubious. Do I think that it's going to like take over the industry? That it's gonna put us human artists out of work? No, I, I haven't seen evidence of that really. Maybe a little bit in animation, especially if they can use AI for like backgrounds and like TV things where you need to churn things out very quickly. I know for caricatures, I feel like it has actually drawn people to that sort of art more because you have evidence as you are getting drawn live that this is not done by a computer, that this is not AI generated, that this is an original work. And I think humans still crave things that are created by humans. Perhaps I'm just very ignorant because I'm not chronically online. I have not seen it impact my industry. And as a writer, I also deeply don't feel threatened by it. I think artificial intelligence is also a misnomer. Yeah, it's capable of doing things, but it's not capable of doing everything. <laughs> and it needs us to do anything. For me, anything that's like written by ChatGPT, yeah, you can tell it reads like AI. AI's not gonna make fiction, not good fiction. I follow a lot of like writing groups or self-publishing groups on Facebook, partially because they're incredibly cringe and naive and kind of terrible, but there's something almost entertaining about how terrible they are. You will see people that are into self-publishing and for their back cover copy or like what they're gonna put on Amazon, you can tell they use ChatGPT to like write it up or they use AI to make their cover art and everyone calls them out on it. It's like, you're not, ruling anybody. Now, do I think that you can use ChatGPT as a template for query letters maybe? Even then, it can be like a starting point, but you're gonna have to go in and actually make it your own. That's how I feel about all these things. Like even when it comes to the art world, I can see like if you need to come up with character designs using AI as a starting point and then making it your own. If you use it as a tool, that's the healthiest, most useful way to use it. I don't really mess with that stuff at all. Again, perhaps I'm speaking out of ignorance, but it's just not something I'm really worried about or concerned on. I think it's interesting that some people are very, very, very deeply afraid of it. But I think some people just love to be afraid of things. It like gives them meaning or purpose if they think the world's always on fire. And right now it's AI is the bad guy and next year it will be, you know, something new, something different. So since I already kind of talked about it, this was another question asked, which were thoughts on self-publishing on Amazon, the pros and cons. I've never self-published on Amazon. So this is my like opinion from afar. 
I've done some research on it and like I said I've been part of these like sometimes incredibly cringe inducing Facebook groups of people who self-publish on Amazon and I would say that's definitely one of my biggest takeaways is there's a lot of trash. There's a lot of trash and there's a lot of people who self-publish and God bless them and they don't know what they're doing. They don't know anything about the industry. They don't know anything about writing. They don't know anything about the craft. They don't know anything about storytelling. And they just really think if they just put their words in a PDF and put it on Amazon that they're going to make money as a writer. And that is shocking. I think if you were going to try to actually make it on Amazon from everything I've researched, it helps to be in a genre where you can churn things out quickly. So romance, thrillers, things like that that are more plot heavy, self-contained in one, you know, 70,000 word story, not like an epic fantasy. Those from what I understand, aren't necessarily doing amazing, unless they're hyper, hyper, hyper niche. Uh, there's this one self-publishing guy who said that he was doing like detective noir samurai. <laughs> so like generally not something you'll find in a Barnes and Noble and incredibly niche, but he does really well. Be and self-publishing because you get 100% of the pro I mean, that's a controversial statement. Because you get the majority of the profits, it's you and Amazon. You know, it's not you and then a team of people uh, like it is with traditional publishing, but because you are getting the bulk of the profits, you don't need a huge audience to see similar returns that you would see in traditional publishing with a huge audience. And of course, this is what people come back to. They'll be like, well, traditional publishing, they might give you a $10,000 advance, but you actually have to have like, get kind of a big audience and sell a lot of books before you see any royalties in Amazon, other than like the the 40%, I don't remember the numbers. I wanna say it's 40%, but I know it's different depending on if you do Kindle Unlimited or not. Um, but whatever cut you give to Amazon, but you get, 100% of that back and I'm like, this is true. You also have to be the cover designer, you have to be the editor, you have to be the marketer. And to me, that's a lot of work. And there are some people that are willing to do that or maybe they have ties and, and have enough capital that they're able to hire editors and to hire people to help with marketing. Um, and to hire cover designers, but otherwise that's all on you. That's all your expense. I think if you want to be successful, you either need to niche down or be ready to write a lot, be ready to pump books out every three to six months. I think once a year might even be too little if you wanna like actually make money from self-publishing. And I think it will do better with genres that allow you to have a lot more fun and have a little bit more liberty. They're not as like, heavy, you know, maybe be at peace with the fact that it's not going to be the next great American novel and there's a good chance most likely it's not going to be, you know, picked up. You're not going to have a an HBO deal or anything like that. I know there's kind of like a D&D esque role playing, like super, super silly self publishing book. I don't remember what it's called. My friend read it, but it's huge. It has like its own subreddit and all that and it's doing really, really well. So if you're somebody that can write fast to write fast, turn out stories fast, turn out ideas fast. Self-publishing very well might be in it for you. If you love having all these different projects and having complete control, self-publishing might be for you. If you love looking at analytics, if you love the craft of writing and you just don't want to have to even worry about potentially compromising your ideas or your voice, uh, self-publishing might be for you. But understand that the space, the self-publishing space is taken up by a lot of poorly done children's books and a lot of memoirs, <laughs> frankly. There's no bar to entry, which means there's no bar to entry. If you guys have stuck with me with for a while, then you know that I'm pretty hell-bent on traditional publishing. And I won't lie, a huge part of that is ego and prestige and how seriously people tend to take books. And you can disagree, but this is just how I bluntly see the world. I take books that are published in like a Barnes and Noble or, you know, library that are just, that are actually out and about and published by a traditional publisher or even smaller press, but that are like in bookstores, uh, on Audible, that kind of thing more seriously than I do a self 
self-published work. I've read good self-published works. I have a feeling that a I feel that way, that other people also feel that way. But if you don't care about any of that, if that doesn't matter to you, if you're like, I just wanna write what I wanna write and try to make money doing it, and I'm talking about Amazon a lot because it is the biggest producer of self-published works out there. I know uh, Barnes & Noble has its own thing and there's a few others, but I think like 60%, maybe even more, maybe like 90%, one of, one of those two. Uh, either way, the vast, vast, vast majority of the self-published market is through Amazon and Kindle, especially Kindle Unlimited, which pros and cons to that as well. I have no deep love or loyalty to Amazon at all, and I know that a lot of people in the self-publishing world struggle with what a chokehold Kindle has on the self-publishing world. Now, what I can respect about Kindle, and this kind of brings back to the first topic, is that they are very sensitive to the use of AI and covers. I think that's very cool. Or I think you have to state that your cover is AI generated, or if you use any AI in your writing, like they are kind of cracking down on that, and I appreciate that a lot. <laughs> you know, as much as I'm like, oh, I'm not that worried about AI, um, I. I suspect book covers is another industry where it might or be creeping in more than I give it credit for, especially in self-published works. And that's something that I think should be called out on or you should know about if an author is using AI images. Well, this has been a very chaotic little discussion. So please let me know below if you have any more insights or offshoots or counter thoughts or opinions about what I have rambled on and on about and I can't wait to see you guys in more videos and I will see you next week. Bye!